this is a pretty big model. And uh, I'm not an expert radio control pilot, so I may actually crash this thing, but hopefully not. So I'm going to start one of the engines. And then we'll start, uh, well, we'll start both of them right now. Hey everybody. Looks like somebody left this truck running. And the same can be said for the tractor. Anyway, I'm at the flying field. There's a nice plane. I'm going to be flying this uh, this North American B-25 Mitchell. It's a beautiful plane. It's considered a medium bomber. I think the first one was built in like early 19... 41. And by the time World War II ended, North American had made almost 10,000 of these things. This one is the Yellow Rose. You can see a 50 caliber machine gun poking out of the nose. And on the side of the fuselage, there's some uh, what you call blisters. And there's 50 gallon, excuse me, 50 caliber machine guns there on the side, two of them. If I walk around to the other side. You can see two more of those. So there's five 50 caliber machine guns forward facing. And on top of the plane, you can see this uh, ball turret. But you can see two fifty calibers uh, there also. And another fifty caliber there. Two more out the back. and another one right there. So how many did we count? Uh, well, two in the back, six on the side, two in the back, that's eight, one in the nose, that's nine, and two on the top, that's uh, 11, right? So 11 
50 caliber machine guns. They use this plane pretty much in every theater, uh, combat theater, during World War II. You know, if they were using them uh, in the Pacific, they were outfitted slightly differently than they would be if they were using them in, say, uh, over Germany or something. Two engines, 1,700 horsepower each. N not on the model, but, you know, on the real plane. And these things were really, really good planes. There's actually like 45 of these left in, in real life that are still flying. These are built really well. So we're out here, out in the middle of nowhere. The Real Flight Ranch. I think there's a helicopter on that table over there. But yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna start it up and uh, there's a bomb bay door. I forgot to talk about that. You see that door on the bottom? That's the bomb bay door. You know, open it up. You know, bombs away. Let me open it again. Now I'll close it. This is a pretty big model, and uh, I'm not an expert radio control pilot, so I may actually crash this thing, but hopefully not. So I'm going to start one of the engines, and then we'll start, uh, well, we'll start both of them right now. Let's test out the controls. The steering. Let's see. Let's check out the front wheel. And when I turn the front wheel, it also turns the tail fins. Let's check out the elevator. Oops, wrong knob. I think everything seems to check out. Let's walk over here to the side. So, I'm going to taxi down to the left side of the runway.
Now if you look on the bottom right of the screen, you can see the, the joystick that I'm using. You can't see it in the video, but in my hand I have an actual size radio unit just like they would use uh, in real life to fly radio control planes. And it looks like what you see in the picture there. Okay, so let's take it up and fly it around a little bit. Maybe I won't crash. Here we go. That's not what I wanted, but it works. I'm going to put the landing gear up. Check it out. That's a good sized plane. And I'm actually flying it pretty slow. Let's see if I can change camera view here. That's a nose camera. Let's put the gear up. Just kind of cruising along. Let's bring it back around toward the field. Make us a low speed pass. I wonder if I can fly this with just one engine. 
I'm going to gain some altitude and then turn one of the engines off. Okay, let's turn one engine off. Okay. It can be done. Uh-oh. this thing up. That's crazy. We're going to try it one more time. So let's put it back. Let's fix it and put it back on the runway. Let's get back over there. Let's try this again, okay? thing turned around. Here we go. Wheels up. for a nice, nice look. Adjust the trim a little bit. She's trying to climb all on her own. Bring it down for a low low altitude pass peel off to the right I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels down. And we're going to try to land it. It takes a lot of depth perception to do this.
tell you what, let's take off one more time and try to land again. Maybe we can try some aerobatics in this thing. Let's do a full throttle. In real life, the plane could fly over 300 miles an hour. This nice loop to loop. I wonder if I can do a barrel roll. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that's nice. We're going to try to land it again, this way from the other side, the other end of the field. Let's get the wheels down. Cut back on the power. And bring it around. Back on the power, off the power. Coming in, coming in hot. Here we go, here we go. Kind of bumpy, but at least I didn't destroy it this time. So here it is, the North American B-25 Mitchell. It's named after a, a, a general, uh, Billy, Billy Mitchell, I believe. Most bombers are named, you know, with names that kind of signify safety and power, like, uh, the B-17 is a, they call that a flying fortress, and the B-29 is called a, a super fortress, and a B-24 is called the Liberator, but this one's named after a, a man. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more video videos like this, featuring uh, other other aircraft, you know, just uh, just let me know, and I'll see what we can do. So until then, uh, so long from what's the name of this place again? Real Flight Ranch. Anyway, take care.